Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sushankar. Well, um, there are 20 minutes before we close this session, so I'm going to throw it open for discussion. It won't be as long as I had hoped it would be, but uh, we will still as much time as we can. I see one hand is already up. So please. Uh, yeah, there's the microphone. Here's our friend uh, Shashi. Uh, while we have been extolling the virtues of the uh, Chinese and the Japanese systems in this panel, a uh, question I'd like to raise is, have we learned from their sense of discipline? Dr. Kasirangan's letter said very clearly that each panelist should speak only for a maximum of 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 to 12. Okay. <laughs> more, more seriously, uh, again, I would like to ask uh, Komunio Chattavadha the question. If the UK spending is so low compared to the Japanese spending, then why even now UK produces so many Nobel laureates and so many good ideas? The point I'm trying to make is that we... Yeah, may I make one suggestion? <coughs> if, you, if you don't mind, because the time is running out and I would like as a chairman to keep to the time. Um, you have raised a question. I have a discipline. Uh, so let's, let's see if uh, Dr. Chattabadi will answer it. Because I'd like uh, the panelists to... to yeah, I, 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 very brief. brief uh, yes. UK spending was very large. Last 20 years, it is dipping. It was, it was higher than USA in 80s. But uh, at the moment, it is 1.9 from about 2.5. And you can see that Nobel laureate other things are also coming down. Japanese are starting only from 95, really, really the up. Dr. Wadia, here. I just have a brief comment about uh, this uh, issue of uh, tabletop uh, science versus uh, big science. Uh, I, I completely, I, my view is that we should have a very uh, strong balance and uh, even though I think uh, the uh, the fraction of funding that goes to science projects must be largely for tabletop science for reasons which uh, Shushankar mentioned. I also think that we should not completely neglect uh, our international collaborations. For example, India is collaborating with uh, the worldwide grid project in CERN and I think this is a very important opportunity. We cannot let go on this type of opportunities also. Okay. Actually, my comment is in some sense a continuation of what Spenta was saying, is that I think uh, very often when we have participated in high energy physics in the international big science projects, there has been a lot of spin-off at the tabletop level in the institutional structures. One of the examples is in Bikash Sinha's uh, institute where Manas chip was developed for the data acquisition system and that was exactly the tinkering that you are talking about which actually the young kids there were and young people they were doing. So it is just, just participating in big science doesn't mean that you do not tinker and that you do not develop things yeah. at a tabletop level. No, one, one more Can point I, that yeah, I want sorry. to make. I will just complete and then and the second point that I want, to, because there are two different issues that I wanted to address. And the second issue that we have been all talking about, having groups, a focus group, interaction in a group, that is something I think again is happening in high energy physics for the last 50 years. And part of the reason has been that we have been participating in the big science projects outside. And that has forced upon us collaborating and grouping in India and has developed a very strongly closely knit working group, not just of experimentalists, but of theorists, and where there is a lot of Indian collaboration, which has got, happened because of the big science project. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. You know, so I, I completely agree with uh, both of you about this uh, big importance of big science. I'm not against big science, but I think uh, working from India, should India invest on this big science, or should India take advantage of the other nations where we can actually do big science, send our people, invest marginally, but that's what I'm, I'm, I'm sort of very, uh, uh, I mean, I would be very committed to a scenario where we we invest on big science, but not ourselves, but uh, but you know, other. Yeah. So.
Okay, I just wanted to check one thing. You know, uh, we, we do talk about big science, small science, mini science and so on. The question is one of investment. And you know, there are areas where we can often lament it because of the lack of investment that we have not produced the results. There are areas where the investments are not all that needed. You take the case of mathematics, you take the case of theoretical physics, you take the case of tabletop experiments and so on. I am sure that if you tell Professor Rao that we can get Field Medals and Dan David Medals and uh, uh, Wolves Medals, I am not, I am leaving out Nobel, Nobel Prize for the time being. And if you say that in the next five years we can get at least ten of them and you need hundred to two hundred crores for that, if the country is not starved of it. Why is it that we are unable to perform there to the point that we have a world recognition? Professor Rao would be the best person to answer that. I'm not anybody. Anybody. Okay. Well, um, yeah, but it has to be very brief. Yes, Dr. Shushanka first. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I completely agree with you that uh, we have not done enough and we are really not doing enough. And uh, so the question is, uh, how do we start doing that? And uh, in, if you actually look back in the last 20 years, 30 years, the there is a diminishing investment in small-scale science in this country, okay, and also it's very unfocused. So I think if you want to invest in small-scale science, you need to really focus it properly, and that has not been done. You know, it's randomly here, there, and only with what I see, I mean, I might be uh, not aware of these things because I'm sort of new to the system, not so new, but only in, in, in only uh, certain areas this is beginning to happen, and, and clearly one is this uh, nanoscience uh, initiative. So we have to wait and see. I mean, you know, I think it's a wrong attitude to take that if I invest 100 crores, I'm going to uh, have 10 Nobel Prizes. That's not going to happen, actually. What is going to happen is you invest on it and then try to first build up the system, and then only things will happen. Yeah. I just want to make a brief comment. If you look at even the tabletop science investment, even now, 70% investment is for an instrument which was not available actual money that goes for doing research is very, very small. If you look at consumable budget, it will be $3,000 to $4,000. And the cost of doing that, that is same, uh, whether you do it in US or do it in India. And I think that investment has to be more. Actually, the number of people working in the so-called table is very small. Suppose we give other money. Suppose we give other money. Suppose we to attract the students and postdocs that we are failing to attract. What did China and Japan do to attract the students and postdocs that we don't get? I, I, they don't have postdocs. Very, very little. They have a research associate who does the work for postdoc. There's an overall sense of commitment among the people. See, a, a large number of people from U.S. who like our postdocs and pre-docs who go to U.S., uh, whereas in the case of India, many of them try to stay on. Uh, China has been able to attract them back. A number of them are coming back to set up uh, laboratories of their own. They give uh, startup funds for people who come back to, so that they can set up laboratories of their own and they don't have to be an appendage to somebody else's laboratory. Independence, that's a very key thing there. Uh, I have a question for uh, Shiv Shankar, uh, particularly your remark on uh, good uh, scientists being good managers. 
I think the uh, place for a good scientist should really be at the blackboard or in her laboratory. So, uh, I, would you not say that it's better to have a cadre of managers who have a good understanding of science and who will respond to the creative needs for, of uh, good scientists? Making uh, good managers out of good scientists seems to not have worked. Okay, can I just answer? No, I, I completely disagree with that statement because as a scientist, as a working scientist in the laboratory, what I'm affected is by the decisions that people take. I don't want somebody else to take the decision to stop me from doing what is interesting in my research. And so in that context, I think good working scientists should be good working managers of science in this country. Otherwise, I don't think uh, it will work. I would just like to add a brief comment to that, which is uh, I, I think uh, what this, this will only, the good scientists being good uh, managers or being managers will only be a, a problem if it's a one-way street. I, I think there are cases where either people manage both simultaneously or, or, or do the, the management for limited amounts of time, which probably is a generally workable system. Well, I am not subscribing that science should not be funded. I think a large part of the questions and the debates have been on funding independently because if you look at both examples of Japan and China, they have also looked at making systematic changes to the entire structure which has accompanied the increase in funding. And unless these two go hand in hand, I don't think you will be able to get much of a change at looking at either of the two. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. There are two other people there. I, I'm to bring this... Uh, this uh, comment session to close pretty soon. There's somebody there who wants. My question is to Chattopadhyaya. With respect to Japan science and technology, you explained about science and technology basic plan, how it changed the global scenario of Japan uh, from 95 onwards. But uh, with respect to Indian context, we have seen three different policy statements like Science Policy Resolution 58, 1958, then 1983 technology policy statement, then 2003 science and technology policy statement. How do you find, I mean, whether, uh, is there any eff effect of all these policies to make India, I mean, uh, contemporary to the Japan or something like that? Don't you, thi don't you think that we have a very good policy statements? Of course, we don't have science and technology act that I uh, to agree, but do we have uh, the policies now and in that uh, perspective, how do you look at uh, the... I, I just give a brief answer. All Aliyah 3 policy statement of India cannot be uh, compared with the basic uh, law that enacted by Japan's parliament in 95. It comes with the, with the money and the infrastructural change and the structural change. Our policy statement for a long time, up to 2003, has not come with that kind of initiative, concrete initiative. In fact, only recently we see some initiatives that is coming up with a, with a fund alongside this, like a nano-nano initiative and things like that. So we really cannot compare those. Those are policy statements not backed by fundings. So we cannot compare. Whereas Japanese 1995 law, law number 130, is backed by 14, 17 trillion of yen and then 24 trillion of yen. And that's the difference. Uh, okay. Uh, just to follow up on the uh, the remark the lady made uh, before, uh, uh, referring to you know, other systematic changes that are needed and talking, uh, we are talking here only about funding. One of the points I think to be made is uh, the real crisis in the university system. You are trying to build a science on a base that is shrinking, whose library base has been completely destroyed. You may give them electronic journals now, but their basic journal base for 15 years has been destroyed. And I think there is a other all kinds of crises with respect to personnel, infrastructure, management, all kinds of things. And that, I know it's, it seems very difficult to me to talk of building science without a base volume on top of which the peaks be. I don't know where this fits into this dis discussion. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody mentioned this. Basically, I think we in India don't work hard. I don't feel that we don't work hard. I really, I really feel it's 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 five it's hours of work is just a per day. That is a lot. Five hours in the rest of the five hours of coffee, you know. So <laughs> I think that you know, you know, yeah. Yeah. since you are talking honestly, I find this uh, a bit 
No, I, I, I think, yeah. I think the solution is very clear if one goes in Japan. The quantum of work and quantum of hard work, I think it's not there. Well, I think that we should actually uh, conclude this session in a few minutes' time. So I've uh, uh, cut down the number of minutes which the chairman had kindly given me, Dr. Pesorogan had kindly given me for making comments at the end of the session. So let me just say that I think it's been extremely useful. Now, once again, very illuminating. Because I think that the comments made by the group of scientists we have here, you know, in some sense, the future of India, uh, uh, the age viewpoint of people like myself, have to be taken very seriously. Even if we may disagree on the comments. Why? Because that's the perception and we have to look at why the perceptions are what they are. I think that uh, very useful suggestions and comments have been made. Uh, one uh, interesting uh, feature of the discussion that followed the presentations that I noticed is this. That some of the statements that they made have not come up for discussion at all. Uh, and I presume, therefore, that there is wide agreement on those statements that they made. <laughs> but whereas questions about, uh, about funding, about little science and big science, uh, they have been discussed. And I'm not sure that there is much more that I can add to what's already been said. I think that it's been uh, uh, recognized. Uh, by everybody that uh, in some sense both are necessary. We need to maintain uh, a balance. The question is what is that balance? Have we struck the balance right or not? There is an impression I think among younger scientists that we have not struck the best balance uh, there. But I think uh, on the more fundamental issues what comes out again and again to me is this. And once again here, the question is not whether that is true in the way that I see it or somebody else sees it or not. The question is that that's the impression that people have. One is about goals. And uh, both, I think, Srikant Shastri and um, Dr. Shivashankar uh, pointed out that uh, a clear vision should be there. That goals need better articulation. That, uh, to echo what uh, Professor Siyanara said in the morning, there should be greater commitment. There should be greater commitment on the part of the scientists individually, as well as uh, institutionally and nationally to certain more or less identified goals. Now, of course, uh, uh, once you start setting goals and backing them up with uh, budgets, it will curb our freedom a little bit. I mean, that also we have to understand. I mean, part of the virtue that all of them saw in the Indian system, which is that you had a certain amount of freedom may actually become a little less if we start defining our goals uh, with a very sharp focus. Well, once again, the question will be, well, uh, let's have both of them. Let's have some which is uh, free, open-ended, and some which will be focused uh, goals. Uh, that, is, uh, that is something which I see that uh, uh, it did not attract much uh, discussion after the presentations were made. Um, one other issue which was not discussed was about administrative and technical support. I don't know whether that means that by and large everybody here is agreed that what they said is correct. I myself have great sympathy with what uh, they've said. I think that uh, we actually need, if you want to run a good institution and if you want to have good research groups, I do think that the quality of administrative and technical support in India has to increase. That support now is uh, maybe with, uh, with very few exceptions is just not adequate, I think. And therefore, it might well be that one of the things that we should do is to look at our policy about how uh, our administration is staffed. Uh, I think it was Srikant Shastri, I'm not sure, one of you, who said that there are these two systems, the academy and the government. And we have, uh, you know, we quite often opted for the, for the government rather than for the academy. I remember one comment which uh, Nehru made in one of his Science Congress addresses, which impressed me very much. You remember after, soon after independence, uh, he would, uh, well, in fact, he started even before 1947. He made these um, great speeches about how scientists are more important than industrialists and businessmen and accountants and administrators and uh, we should push science and technology and so on. But uh, 10 or 15 years later, he began to say, but you know, and he was actually, uh, what do you call, teasing the scientists a little bit. But in the end, you all come and tell me about government. You all want to be treated like government servants. So he said, there is something funny here. 
So, you know, Sundar Sarekai mentioned this morning how culture is very important. I agree with that. I think there is a certain culture outside, in the country, in our society. And whether we like it or not, it affects the way that we do science, we look at science and so on. So there are those other issues. And that once again, we have not touched on in the discussion, but they're very important. Uh, that culture may not be easy to change. Uh, maybe here the scientists have to take a lead. When I think uh, Baba set up uh, TIFR and the Atomic Energy Department, he did take a lead, which uh, was an attempt to change the culture of the administration of science in this country. Maybe we need another big effort there. Uh, let me conclude with uh, just two quick comments. One, <clears throat> I think everybody has agreed that India has a lot of talent. I mean, there, there seems to be no doubt about it. About resources, nationally the resources devoted to science still seem to be small compared to what the other countries are devoting. But on the other hand, obviously the brighter young scientists in the country do not find that funding is the major problem. They've, they've said that again and again this afternoon. Now, uh, it seems to me that the major problem here may be that, uh, once again, this also came up, that we are not attracting enough talent and we are not managing them well enough. Now, uh, I remember a meeting uh, which uh, I attended, a kind of a dialogue in uh, Washington some years ago, in fact at the Department of State, and uh, one of my colleagues remarked to this lady who was an Assistant Secretary of State, well, you know, you Americans prospered on imported European talent before the war, and you are now prospering on imported Asian talent after the war. And she said, well, you are absolutely right. I'm not forcing them to come here. You must understand that nobody seems to know in the world how to manage talent as well as we do. Even the Europeans don't know how to do it. That's what she said. So I think that one of the major problems in India is actually not lack of talent. We're all agreed on that. But somehow managing the talent and encouraging them. And I think many useful suggestions have actually been made. I have actually a summary of all those suggestions which I am not going to repeat to you, but I want to make one comment, however, which I have myself felt uh, many times in my own uh, scientific career. And that is this. Um, the productivity of an individual Indian scientist is usually lower, I feel, even when he may have adequate funding support and so on. So we have to ask, why is that so? Why is the productivity lower? One is this thing which uh, Professor Rao and uh, others have pointed out, maybe we don't work hard enough. Uh, that's certainly there. But there is another factor. I see that in the structure of our academic research, we have neither the Japanese system nor the American system. In the American system, you have a large number of postdocs. And quite often, a good and busy professor has an army of postdocs helping him with another army of students who are working through these postdocs with that professor. In India, the postdoctor's position is unattractive from every point of view. It's a very temporary thing. You hardly get a few thousand rupees more than what you got as a student. So nobody wants to take a postdoctoral position in India. Well, some do, but by and large, you don't get bright people to do postdoctoral research. The Japanese seem to have solved the problem by doing something else. They have a research assistant, as Dr. Chattopadhyaya uh, described to us, and I've seen it in operation myself. Uh, their structure is very different. I don't think the whole structure in Japan will work. But I feel that if you wanted to multiply the productivity of the more productive scientists in the country, we have to, do, we have to, we have to invent a system in India which will help us. And that system has somehow to provide a more or less stable position at a level which is not quite that of faculty yet. Um, where you mentioned something about the Ramana Fellowship. Well, I don't know whether that is the solution or not, it might be, but we have to devise something. Because this problem has been with us for a very long time. And I know that from my experience, and I think everybody who has guided research here, or done research here, knows that, that we lack that intermediate level, where, uh, uh, where uh, the productivity of the system, I think, can go up if we can invent a system there, which will actually attract enough people um, to a position which is uh, maybe not quite faculty yet, but very close there, rather than something which is uh, rather close to the student and certainly not a position, which is really what we have now. Uh, last point I want to make is about flexibility of uh, spending, which I think Srikant Shastri mentioned. I, I, I know that there are government rules and audits and so on, and uh, this is um, necessary in some sense. But at the same time, going back to what was said in the morning, 
Uh, I want to ask that same question once again. How is it that we work for the knowledge industry in the United States, but we can't get them to work for us? I think that's a very important and interesting question to ask ourselves. Now, if we had some reasonably clearly defined goals, and they may not be one or two, there may be 50, as he said, it may be 25, 50, whatever, a fairly large number of goals. And we have groups or small networks identified. I think we should give them the freedom to get people from abroad to come and work with them. An American professor will write to somebody in the other part of the world and say, can you come and spend two months with me? And he makes the decision. No Indian professor can make the decision. Why is that? I think we have to answer that question. If we can do things like that, I think our productivity might go up. Because we are agreed that we are bright people, we are agreed that we have enough funding, but we are also agreed that our productivity is low. If you are not working hard enough, that's a cultural problem. But for those who are working hard enough, are we doing everything that we can in terms of the system to enhance the productivity? I think there are some things that we can do. It's within our hands, and I think we should do that. Thank you very much. I stop here. Chairman, yes. I really like your summary. You know, you did have one sentence. <laughs> I think whatever new system will be just for Indian system. It has to be because, you know, Indians will run away. Japan one day is all they get married. You can't work. Indians can't work. Like we have to have our own way of it. Human relationship. You know, India, we work better. Personal loyalty. First knowing people. It's not, you can't just order people and say everybody will work. India is different. So we have to find our own system. Thank you, Vasanjal. I actually agree. I think I can show Thank you. Thank you. And I must thank all our speakers for making yeah, such, yeah. A, such a good presentation. Thank, thank you, Professor Narsimha, for really keeping to the time in spite of real difficulty in terms of managing because of the kind of questions that I raised.